Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. It is April 30th, 2024. Let's talk heavyweight boxing. Let's talk the man I consider the heir apparent, unbeaten Philippe Ergovic versus Daniel Dubois. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me just say, much of the heavyweight division right now is an illusion, right? You have title-worthy fighters. These are guys who would give any champ a tough fight, <clears throat> and the public is ignoring them. One of them, in my opinion, is unbeaten, Philippe Ergovic. Right? I believe he would give anyone in boxing a very difficult fight. I think if you put him in the ring against Alexander Usyk, he would do a better job than Anthony Joshua did in either fight. I believe Tyson Fury would have a problem with him. In other words, this is an elite guy. He's so elite that a sanctioning body said, hey, fight Philippe Bergovic so that you can become the mandatory. And several boxers decided not to take up the sanctioning body's offer. Understand, that's how we came to know about Zhili Zhang. He stepped up after several heavyweights, said Ergovic, too dangerous, no thank you. Zhili Zhang, of course, gave Ergovic a very tough fight, knocked him down with his right hand, right head-butted him, opened up a gash on Ergovic's head that was bleeding down into his eyes. You got to the later round, the later rounds of that fight, and Ergovic needed to dig deep to win most of them. Folks, that's exactly what he did, in my opinion. I understand. There's a sizable group of people out there, and I don't blame them who feel that Zhili Zhang got robbed, right? That fight is one of the most important heavyweight fights of the last five years. So Ergovic got by that fight. He's still unbeaten. And now he's about to fight a guy who he sparred with. And if you read through the comments, both guys, Ergovic and Daniel Dubois, appear to acknowledge that Ergovic got the better of the sparring session. Now let's pivot right here, right? I need for the public to understand that I don't agree with the public on some things. <clears throat> you have a heavyweight who is about to fight in a match that's going to be recognized toward this heavyweight's record. Right? You have a heavyweight who knows who he is, who understands that he has fast hands, he has power in both hands, that he does not have much of a back foot, that he's a front foot heavy guy who needs to hurt you in the early rounds. His stamina isn't great. At his age, at a minimum, he knows it's not what it was. And that's Iron Mike Tyson. And Tyson, with these skills, right? Hand speed, power, accuracy. Tyson is fighting Jake Paul. Take Jake Paul seriously, please. I'm not going to say who I think wins that fight because I've made a video for premium subscribers already. But let's just say I have no doubt, none whatsoever, that early in that fight, Mike Tyson is going to try to bring it. There's not going to be a part of that fight in the first three rounds where Tyson's being tentative, where Tyson's on the outside just looking at Jake Paul. No, Tyson is going to be in there throwing punches. He's going to be on his front foot, 
he's going to be trying to find and trying to chase down Jake Paul. Now, I mentioned Tyson in this video because Daniel Dubois has a similar skill set. Fast hands, power with both hands. A Dubois fight can literally change on one punch. Here's the problem. Here's the difference. Tyson knows who he is. Tyson looks in the mirror and he sees the fighter he is. I don't know what Daniel Dubois sees when he looks in the mirror. Right, you're looking at a Dubois fight and he's hanging around. He's tentative. He's not letting his hands go. You want to say, hey, player, don't you know you have a punch with both hands? You want to say, hey, hey, player, don't you know you have hand speed? It's even worse than that. He's fighting Alexander Usyk. You're thinking, wow, this is a big opportunity. You're thinking, man, Dubois hits harder than Usyk. At a minimum, Dubois needs to come out there like Mike Tyson would. And say to quote Jack Johnson, paraphrase Jack Johnson, Johnson fighting Tommy Burns, the champion at the time, knockout puncher, by the way, right? In my favorites folder, I have a Tommy Burns knockout. Tommy, before that fight, was telling people that Jack Johnson was yellow, right? This is the early 20th century. Those are the words they used. So the fight starts. It's in Australia. Johnson comes out and, according to legend, looks across the ring at the heavyweight champ and says, Here I am, Tommy. Now, who told you I was yellow? Right? Folks, that's not Daniel Dubois. Right? You thought Dubois was going to come out and say, Hey, you know, Usyk, this is the heavyweight division. I'm a heavyweight. I think my hand speed compares to yours. I'll take my chances on my power. You're going to have to get through the next nine minutes to show me personally that you're the heavyweight champion. Folks, look at the beginning of that Usyk-Dubois fight. What's Dubois doing? The way Dubois is fighting that fight, do you even know Dubois is fighting a heavyweight champ? Dubois is taking his time. Dubois is tentative. You're wondering if Dubois thinks he's going to win by decision. It's even worse than that. You get the big moment. I thought it was a legal punch. Middle of the fight. Dubois hits Usyk. We can debate whether it's above or below the belt line, whether it's legal or illegal. But he hits Usyk in the belly and Usyk goes down. Now, I got to tell you, there are a lot of fighters, a lot of fighters who... As the ref is admonishing them, as the ref is giving the other guy five minutes to get off the canvas, there are a lot of fighters who would think to themselves, man, I'm going to jump on this dude. <laughs> the first opportunity after this ridiculous break, I'm going to jump on this dude. That punch was legal. I'm going to take him out. He's bluffing. He's desperate. He's trying to hold on to his title. I'm going to take it from him by force. This dude is not going to last through the end of the next round. You and I know you got hungry fighters out there who would see dude on the canvas, who would think to themselves, man, is this ref going to rip me off? Who would be so angry? Who would be so rage-filled? Who would see the opportunity? Right? I could not imagine. I mean, seriously, I... I could not imagine a Joe Fraser feeling that he's about to be ripped off. Having the guy get off the canvas and then not trying to light him up. Not trying to let him know, look, man, you fooled a ref player. You haven't fooled me. Not having the guy know, look, it's not your night. It's my night. We both know that because you're getting off the canvas. You're looking at Daniel Dubois, and you're thinking, wow, is he patient. Right? Dubois even lands some shots to Usyk's body. Usyk looks vulnerable. But then even that dies down. 
There's no urgency. It's as if Dubois did not realize that this was one of the biggest moments of his career. Now, by contrast, you have a guy, as I said before, who needed a bunch of rounds in a fight where he's bleeding from the head, where he's been knocked down. He needed the rounds. Folks, there's desperation. We can debate. We can debate whether Ergovic did enough in those late rounds against Zhang. As I said, that's one of the most important heavyweight fights of the last five years in my eyes. Right? But just understand, Ergovic went for it. You knew he had been hit hard. You knew he was woozy. He went for it. Right? Throws combinations, is backing away, is trying to roll with punches. Understood he could not be patient. Understood his time was running out. Folks, when I see a guy like Philippe Ergovic, and he's highly skilled, right? Understand, this is a guy with a back foot who's a slugger. He has a great front foot. He throws his punches on a loop. He's an angles guy, kind of like Tim Zhu. Right? He leverages his height to the point where it looks like he's always throwing down, even when he's fighting a tall guy like Gili Zhang. Right? Understand, too, I know Joe Parker beat Zhang. Okay, fair enough. Right? Gili Zhang is one of the toughest matchups in the heavyweight division. The heavyweights who dodged Philippe Bergevic did us a favor. Because then we got to see Zhang. And we understood. This dude is a bad boy. Right? Zhang would go on, of course, to beat Joe Joyce twice. Right? Zhang, one of the hardest matchups in the heavyweight division. A legitimate threat to the throne. Right? As long as the guy with the title isn't mobile and isn't as slick as Joe Parker, right? So just to understand, Ergovic, and there are tapes here on YouTube of Ergovic sparring with people like Deontay Wilder, right? We're now hearing that he sparred privately with Daniel Dubois and got the better of Dubois, right? Just to understand, Ergovic, maybe not officially, but in sparring has been in the ring with many of the best, Heavyweights. So, given that Daniel Dubois doesn't know who he is, and let's be clear here too, his win over Jarrell Miller, Jarrell Miller is volume, front foot volume, where he's always coming in on you. He's like, you know, as predictable as planes landing at an airport. Right? Let's face it, too. Jarrell Miller had a lot going on in his life. It wasn't like Dubois caught Miller at the peak of his career. Let me also say, too, Jarrell Miller, whatever he's done in the ring, it deserves an asterisk. Right? Because of the failed drug test. It's my understanding, and I'm just telling you my understanding, that Jarrell Miller wasn't close to passing the drug test before a planned fight against Anthony Joshua. Right? You would have thought, even if you are using illegal drugs, you would have thought you would have the common sense if you got a shot at the heavyweight champion. Right? You would think that you would say, you know what? I got to clean up my act. If only for one night. Understand, Miller was going to be fighting Joshua on U.S. soil. Miller would have been the home country fighter. Talk about blowing an opportunity. Well, let me just say, when a guy gets busted on a drug test and, you know, it looks like the guy was on a regimen. In other words, there isn't even a good alibi. You know, the clenbuterol guys have that tainted meat. I bought meat off a, feed tr uh, a food truck, right? You know, excuse, right? Someone's going to say, hey, I bought meat 
in some part of the world where they give animals clenbuterol. That's the only reason it's in my system. It's my understanding Gerald Miller didn't even have that alibi. The drugs in his system were that advanced. You would only be able to get them from people who are cutting corners in the PED world. In other words, it wasn't like the brother had too much caffeine in his system and the guy could say, oh man, damn Starbucks. You know, I, I admit I was at the coffee shop before I, you know, gave a sample. No, it wasn't that. Right, so Gerald Miller, you know, all I can say too is Miller outside the ring has had some legal problems. So he fights Daniel Dubois. Right, let's just say he didn't exactly force Dubois to set the pace. Right, the question is whether Dubois understands that he could be a Mike Tyson type guy. Right, he could force the issue on you. You want to force Dubois to be active. Right, give Dubois the wheel to the car. You know, tell him, hey, go ahead and drive us. Then you find out Dubois can't lead. Instead, Gerald Miller makes it easy for him in that fight. Miller comes to Dubois. In my opinion, Philippe Ergovic is too cerebral for that approach. Ergovic is going to know that Dubois, simply put, as talented as he is, is unsure of himself. Now, the casino, of course, is in the business of making money. The casino has properly priced this. Right now, at places like FanDuel, Philippe Ergovic is going off at a minus 240. In other words, the casino is telling you if these guys fought 3.4 times, Ergovic would win 2.4 of the 3.4 times. Right? You're getting... Dubois up to a plus 210. Most places have him around a plus 165, a plus 170. Right? So what we're going to have to do here, I expect Ergovic to win the fight. But I'd like to see some over-unders and stuff like that because I believe there is a distinct possibility that Ergovic wins the fight by stoppage. I need for people to remember how that Usyk fight with Dubois ended. Now, you know there are some fighters, and let's be blunt here. Let's, let's just keep it 100. There's some fighters who you have to say from themselves. Right? All of us felt uneasy watching Tyson Fury tee off on Derek Chisora. At a certain point, you were thinking, Ref, please stop this fight. Right, please stop this fight. We can't have this level of beatdown happen on live TV. Right? I remember years ago I was watching Vitaly Klitschko teeing off on Shannon Briggs. I got that fight wrong. I had Klitschko winning it by stoppage. Shannon Briggs refused to go down. Right? That's what happens when you have a lion heart in boxing. Right? That you know, some fighters are warriors. They refuse to go down. Now, let me just tell you, I get the feeling that a Derek Chisora or a Shannon Briggs could not imagine, I mean, honestly, couldn't imagine being in a fight against Usyk, a fight in which they knocked Usyk down, right? Where they don't have some blood pouring into an eye or they don't have a broken arm or something like that. Right? A blown knee, a torn pec. I remember in Eddie Chambers' fight where his pectoral muscle blew up. And you know what Eddie did? He kept fighting with his other arm. Right? Guys like that couldn't imagine being in the ring against a heavyweight champ, having knocked down the guy, and then having the fight end the way that Usyk Dubois fought, uh, fight ended. Especially when you have Dubois' punch. Right? 
I just get the feeling that if Ergovic discourages Dubois enough, if Ergovic is in there and he's looping shots, Dubois has already taken a knee against Joe Joyce. I don't blame him there, right? If my eye's about to go, I might take a knee, right? I'm not sure what the reason was for him deciding to lose the fight against Ergovic the way he did. You heard me earlier mention Joe Fraser. You know who Joe Fraser was? He's getting knocked down several times by George Foreman in Jamaica. And Fraser kept getting up. Even a hellacious puncher who has proven it to you by knocking you down several times was not enough to convince Joe Fraser to stop fighting. Dubois has stopped fighting before. I believe he's in against one of the best here. Dubois is the kind of guy who, if he gets discouraged enough, he'll take a knee and live for another day. Right? That's a boxing philosophy, right? For some boxers. He's not the Joe Fraser guy who is straight out of, you know, one of these movies where the bad guy keeps getting hit with shots and then keeps coming back. Right? He's not that guy. Right? He's not Derek Chisora, where the ref at a certain point has to say, Hey, Derek, <laughs> I'm waving this off. I don't think you have a chance here. Right? So I'm on the Ergovic side of the play. I think Ergovic has a chance at a stoppage. I'll take the minus 240. On Ergovic simply to win, I'll sprinkle some on Ergovic by stoppage. I'm going to wait to see the over-unders because that will be the hedge. I believe the only way for Dubois to win this fight is to do so by stoppage over the first, let's say, eight rounds. Because I believe if the fight is not his by then, I believe personality-wise he'll get discouraged and will be looking for a way out after the eighth round. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. I hope you leave them in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.